What do we know about alpha-synuclein and its role in neuropathology? So alpha-synuclein is a protein that was uh, first associated with Parkinson's disease about um, 22 years ago now, in 1997. Uh, as part of the main component of the typical protein inclusions we find in the brain of patients with Parkinson's. Since then, uh, it was found also in the brains of patients with dementia with Lewy bodies and also in the brains of patients with other uh, diseases that belong to the same group of diseases that we call generally synucleinopathies. So we think this protein is really important because it's present in the brains as like protein trash that accumulates in the brains of patients. But uh, we still don't know exactly what the protein normally does in the cell, and we don't know how it causes disease. So this is the main topic of the research that I do. What post-translation modifications occur in alpha-synuclein? So what happens is, in biology, proteins are normally produced naked, if you want to call it like that. And then cells uh, dress up proteins in different ways, depending on what the proteins are supposed to do. And uh, alpha-synuclein, during its lifetime, undergoes a series of post-translation modifications, some of which we know and some of which we don't know, and we are trying to discover and identify. And uh, one of these post-translation post modifications that has been mostly studied is called phosphorylation. And we know that this is the typical modification that occurs in the, the protein inclusions that are found in the brains of patients. Now, in our recent work, we identified some other modifications that seem to also relate to pathological forms of alpha-synuclein, but one of the modifications we found seems to actually prevent its accumulation, its aggregation. So we're very excited about this finding. So the name of this modification that we found is called acetylation, and we found it just by looking in uh, brains of animal models or cell models uh, using complicated techniques like mass spectrometry and immunostainings. And uh, basically what we found is that when the protein is more acetylated, it's more soluble, so it doesn't go into the inclusions as readily as it does if it's not uh, acetylated. So this is why we think that if we identify genes or proteins that are involved in the process of acetylation or deacetylation, we might uh, have a handle on how to uh, intervene and uh, maybe prevent the protein from aggregating in the brains of patients. So the different research questions we have in the field of alpha-synuclein related uh, biology and pathobiology have to do with, on one hand, post-translation modifications, but then also on identifying genes and uh, cellular pathways that uh, interfere with it, its aggregation and accumulation because we think this process is really central in many diseases. Alzheimer's, dementia with Lewy bodies, Parkinson's disease. So we think if we tackle the problem by understanding what factors affect the aggregation of the protein, we might then uh, have ways for uh, intervening therapeutically. So we look at uh, not only the pathobiology of the protein, as I said before, but also at the biology, because we don't understand the function of the protein very well. We have some ideas, but we need to understand what it does uh, you know, to a deeper degree so that we can then also understand what we may be able to do and what we don't want to do to the protein to avoid uh, uh, complications that would not be desirable if we wanted to intervene therapeutically.